Jed here with another um, Hammerdown breakdown following Purdue's uh, impressive uh, home victory over uh, the Michigan Wolverines. Yes, a depleted Michigan Wolverine squad, uh, obviously without all Big Ten uh, guard Doug McDaniel serving his second of uh, his six-game suspension due to academic issues, according to the uh, Michigan Athletics uh, release. But a couple things real quick before uh, we uh, click over to midnight here at Mackey Arena. Um, Lance Jones um, had a, an absolute stellar game going uh, five of nine from behind the arc, scoring 24 points. Um, you look at the the stat sheet, and yes, he did get 16 points. But Matt Painter was uh, was sounded awfully impressed in his post game press conference, uh, stating that those 16 shots were really pretty organically found for Jones in the offense today. I really thought he only took one bad one. Um, really, what was uh, surprising? Not I don't want to say surprising, but really, really encouraging was how aggressive but under control. Jones really looked taking those 16 shots. You know, you didn't really think any of those shots really came out of the flow of the offense. Didn't really uh, look like he forced anything. Took one real long uh, sort of transition three pointer that he you know, obviously hit. Um, but a, a Lance Jones that looks that aggressive and that under control at Purdue raises Purdue's ceiling a little bit more than I think a lot of people expected. You know, even when he came in and he showed flashes early on in uh, the early parts of the season, that type of Lance Jones performance, and really if you th look at it, I think you believe he's averaged 19 and a half points over the last three games, you know, it's going to be incredibly difficult to beat Purdue when you get you know, Zach Eady, who's going to, you know, is a double-double, uh, you know, walking out on the floor. You, you've got Braden Smith flirting with a triple-double tonight, going 11 points, 10 assists, 7 rebounds. You know, Zach going for uh, 16 and 10. It, it, it's an incredibly difficult Purdue team to beat before tip-off, but when you get a performance like that from really Purdue's third, fourth scorer, and it's becoming a consistent basis. Really, really becomes a tough task to beat to beat Purdue. And, and when you stack on top of that the fact that Purdue went the entire first half without a turnover, something that they have not done since uh, 2018, um, and then end up actually going through most of the second half without a, a turnover. And really, that that turnover was kind of a fluky little play. Uh, to begin with, and I'm noticing that my glasses are, are seemingly crooked, but it's not my glasses. The table I'm using is, is rather crooked. So if it appears, see, there, that my glasses are not that crooked. Anyway, um, but when Purdue doesn't turn the ball over and, and they out rebound their opponent uh, by, uh, you know, 46 to 37 tonight, and even Matt Painter said it wasn't really their best uh, rebounding effort. Um, when you don't turn the ball over, you out rebound your opponent. Purdue, when Purdue doesn't beat itself, you know, I'm not sure there's another team in the country that can beat them. Uh, when they're hitting shots, they're not beating themselves. They're not turning the ball over. They're not giving up easy buckets. Um, you know, it's just it's 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 a Purdue squad that is going to be incredibly difficult uh, to beat. You know, and, and this, like I said, this this Michigan team. It's hard to get a read on them. This is the second game uh, without Doug McDaniel on the road. They lost uh, in pretty convincing fashion at Maryland, obviously getting blown out here. But it is going to be a different team when Purdue heads back up there in a few weeks. Um, but even with Doug McDaniel tonight, you know, I don't think he's dropping 32 or 33 or 34 points tonight, um, you know, especially with the way that – you know, Lance Jones is playing defense and really harassing those primary ball handlers. You kind of feel a little bit for Jalen Llewellyn. You know, one time Purdue really tried to get him uh, in the portal a, a couple of years ago to transfer in. And, uh, you know, his knee injury last year was obviously still really impacting him. You know, had a couple of plays where he, uh, you know, flat out just kind of the knee gave out on him. And, and you kind of feel for a young man like that. 
Um, but, you know, it, it was very evident that Lance Jones was going to be able to harass their ball handlers. It, it, same with Braden Smith, uh, all up and down the court. And, and Purdue didn't really have to do anything much more than, uh, than that to really cause Michigan problems getting into their offense. Um, other than that, there's not much to take away from this game. You know, Purdue kind of looked like um, – it kind of felt like this was a game where Purdue was going to just kind of, you know, take that first half lead uh, and kind of skirt through and go, uh, you know, 15, 16, 17 points, you know, throughout the second half and just kind of trade, uh, trade buckets there in the second half. And then all of a sudden Purdue goes on another big time run uh, there in the second half to get up by 30. Um, you know, a lot of people thought that that 17 and a half, 18 point, um, you know, you know, line for Purdue was a big line. Obviously, those people out in Vegas, they know what they're doing because uh, Purdue ends up with a, a big-time victory. Uh, obviously, Purdue goes on the road for their next uh, their next game. Uh, that's a big one. You know, Purdue heads to Rutgers and heads to the rack where you don't need much juice there to get that place rocking. You know, probably, you know, the second or third best atmosphere in the big 10. You know, if you're really, really starting to cut hairs, you know, Mac arena, uh, the Breslin center assembly hall in the rack, you know, it, it's gotta be a top five. Uh, Purdue is knows all about going into that place and getting beat. They've lost two games in a row at the rack, both as number one teams in the country in the previous two seasons. So, um, you have to think Purdue is going to go into that game incredibly focused and with a lot of, um, you know, incentive there for them, um, given that they have lost two consecutive games there on the road. Uh, continue to follow Hammer and Rails, uh, both on Twitter and Facebook, and check out hammerandrails.com for uh, your coverage with uh, men's basketball, women's basketball, and with football and the spring uh, season there getting ready to start back up.